What's going on you guys, Ray here, and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the brawlers in the game on how effective they are on the game mode boss fight. So we can have a better idea on which brawlers we should try to be to maximize our rewards, and the brawlers we should try to avoid. So let's jump right into it. Hey guys, so when creating this list, we have to keep in mind a few important details. Like, there are two maps of this game mode, and each individual brawler plays a little bit differently on those maps, and how effective each brawler is as both the boss and going up against the boss. So let's jump into the rankings. We're going to start at 19 first. Alrighty guys, so starting at number 19, coming in dead last, is Piper. So Piper is one of those brawlers that it takes a really long time to reload, and her shots are individualized. You have to target your shots at one specific brawler. So if you're going up against a team of six, it's hard to keep back all of them. Now, when you're going up against the boss, it might be a little bit better. However, it's still not that great. She has really low health, and there are a lot of walls and places to hide where the boss can be. So highly recommend you do not be Piper. So coming in at number 18 is Brock. So somewhat like Piper, his shots are very individualized. So if you happen to be the boss, it's going to be very difficult for you to fend off the entire team. Now, if you're going up against the boss, it is a little bit of a different story. You can get a lot of damage off on the boss. However, I feel like there are plenty of other options that you can be that are going to be a little bit more effective than Brock. Next on our list is number 17, and that is Pam. So I feel like Pam really doesn't have a solid role in boss fight if she happens to be the boss I feel like she could be overtaken by the enemy team very easily she does have a widespread and does quite a bit of damage when she is the boss however I feel like she can get very closed in on she's not very good in mobility she can't get away very well so she's just gonna take a lot of damage from the entire team once they get to him also if you're going up against the boss you have some utility in your super being able to heal up your teammates so they can stay in the fight around them but I feel like it just doesn't outweigh it I feel like I would much rather have have other options on the team other than Pam. Alrighty guys, so jumping into number 16, and that is Bo. Now, Bo has some qualities that can make him a very good brawler, being that his star power on the Hall of the Moe King map, where he can have his team have a lot of vision. Um, however, I feel like he just lacks a lot of mobility, like some of the other brawlers do, and he is a large target. So as the boss, he can be taken down very quickly. Um, I feel like the mines kind of come into play. However, it's kind of a one and done. Once they're gone, you can't really use them again until you charge it up again. Also, his shots are more of a controlling shot so when you're shooting at the entire team you might be doing some good damage however when you need that urgent damage when someone's right on top of you it might be a little bit difficult to push them back or fend them off so that's why Bo is coming in at number 16 so coming in at number 15 is ricochet so I feel like Rico can do a pretty good job against the boss however I feel like his health really holds him back um, he could be taken out really easily by the boss if you're not careful and in this game mode it's really important just to stay alive offering that poke damage and distract the boss while the other teammates are kind of going off on the boss so it's a team effort to take down the boss now when you're the boss as Rico I feel like again it's not that good we're kind of jumping back to that thing where it's more of like an individualized shot where you're shooting in one direction so you have to aim at one specific brawler at one time so it might be a little bit difficult for Rico to fend off a whole entire team so that's why Rico is coming in at number 15 so next on the list is number 14 and that is my main man Poco so you guys Guys, don't know how bad I wanted to place him a bit higher just because he's so good in the current meta and I like him a lot however I feel like he just lacks that urgent damage now Poco can be a great boss because he can shoot through people he can hit more than one person and he can be pretty good as a teammate going up against the boss because he can heal up your teammates however I feel like when you're backed into the corner and Poco's really just trying to do that poke damage keeping the other brothers back when you're getting backed in the corner up against like a bull and a primo they can really chip you down you don't have much mobility to get away plus the healing as the boss really doesn't do much to you so I feel like Poco can be pretty good however not super good <laughs> so next is number 13 and that is Primo so we're getting to the middle of the list and I feel like Primo has some playability in certain situations going up against the boss now Primo can offer a really great distraction for the team so that other brawlers on your team can do a lot of damage to the brawler while 
they're busy with Primo. Because he has a lot of health, you can tank a lot of damage from the pokier brawlers, like uh, Poco and Nita. However, you have to get really close to do the damage. So you're going to take a lot of damage, and you're going to die very often being Primo. Um, now, the reason he's kind of low is that he is really bad as the boss. Um, you have to get, like I said, really close. So the only way to do a bunch of damage to the entire team is waiting for them to get close to you. So you might take a lot of damage before you start um, getting some effectiveness out of your basic attacks. Now, he does have a little bit of mobility with his super being able to jump away, but I feel like it just isn't good enough. Next on our list is number 12, and that is Bull. So much like Primo, I feel like Bull is really good at distracting so the other teammates can do a lot of damage to the boss. However, like Primo, again, I feel like he dies a little bit too often. Now, he can be good in pivotal moments when you have to get a lot of damage off on the boss, where you can super in, get real close, and do a lot of damage. However, he just dies a little bit too much. He is focused on when you are targeted by a boss, you get taken out really quickly. And when you die, it takes a while to respawn and get back to the boss. So I feel like there are plenty of other options that are better than Bull. Um, I feel like he fits well towards the middle of our list. So moving on to number 11, and that is Shelly. So I feel like Shelly's just a hair above Primo and Bull, though they kind of fit the same role. Shelly may have a little bit less health, however, where she lacks in health, she kind of makes up for it in her range. So with her range, she's able to stay alive a little bit longer because she doesn't have to be as reckless. Um, you're going to do a little bit more damage if you get closer. However, you can stay in the fight a bit longer. Now, where she really shines is going up against the boss and her super. So if you have her star power unlocked it stuns them and slows them down for the other teammates on your team to do a lot of damage and take advantage of that opportunity now there has been several times going up against the boss where you kind of chain your super where you're really close shoot them stun them maybe shoot them again and charge up your super again so you can really get a lot of damage rolling with Shelly now flip it on his head if you're the boss with Shelly I feel like she's just not that great I feel like the shotgunners they pack a lot of damage however you're going up against five other people so it does doesn't do a whole lot of damage to the entire team unless you have your super charged up um, or you wait for them to get really close. So I feel like Shelly fits really well in the middle of the list because she has a lot of utility going up against the boss but may not be crazy good as the boss and there are several other options on our list that do much better than her. So next on the list is number 10 and that is Colt. Now I feel like Colt would have fit a little bit better higher up on the list however in the last balance change he got a decrease to his movement speed and his range which he relies on heavily when he is the boss. So I feel like before the nerf he was very good as the boss being able to run away and kite the other shots from the other brawlers. However, now it is a little bit harder and his range kind of puts him at a little bit of a disadvantage. Now, going up against the boss, I feel like he's very good. He's able to take down the walls that the um, bosses are kind of hiding behind and he does a lot of damage from a distance where your other brothers on your team are kind of distracting. You can rack up a bunch of damage from a distance and staying safe. So I feel like Colt's very good option, just not as good as he used to be. Next on the list is number 9, and that is Dynamite. So I feel like Dynamite really fits well right where he's at, just because he is a lobber, so he can stay alive going up against the boss for a very long time and deal a lot of damage before he does die. However, I feel like there are, in certain situations, very difficult to take out the brawlers. The brawlers right now that are the boss and are very good at being the boss have a lot of mobility, um, th whether they're very fast or they have supers that can kind of get away. So it's very difficult to land your shots with Dynamite, Though, if you do, he can do a lot of damage. Now, as the boss, again, I feel like he's not that great just because the brawlers can get very, very close to you very easily. So, he can be taken out very quickly. So, moving on to number 8, and that is Barley. So, I feel like his counterpart, Barley, is a little bit better, though he just did get a nerf to his throwing distance. Um, I feel like that is kind of a big deal. So, he would have been a little bit higher up on the list, but he is a lobber. He can stay alive for a very long time, be annoying with the poke damage, and he has a great super doing a lot of damage if used correctly so I feel like barley is a great option as going up against the boss however as the boss I don't feel like he's that great he can be pretty good at taking them out if you have some cover especially on the map that's out today Calamity Canyon um, when you're in that spawned area where you can slowly chip them down while they're coming around um, that's pretty good however in the other game modes 
not very good. So moving on to number seven, and that is Mortis. Now Mortis was at the very top, one or two on the list before he got changed in the last balance change. Um, he got a decrease to his movement speed, but a buff in basically everything else. <laughs> so his movement speed is much less, but he really relied on that as the boss. Um, I feel like an underlying theme as being a good boss is someone with a lot of mobility who can kind of distract and then get away. So I feel like Mortis is kind of lacking that a little bit more. He can still get away and he can still be effective in running away and tricking the other team. However, he's just not as good as he used to be. Now going up against the boss, he is a pretty good option. He doesn't do a lot of damage. However, he does offer a lot of distraction. Um, he can, If you can stay alive and not take a lot of damage from the boss, you can do a lot of distracting where your other teammates are doing a lot of damage while the boss is busy with you. So I feel like Mortis is overall generally a pretty good pick to bring into boss fight. Um, so make sure to try him out. So moving on to number six, and that is Spike. So I feel like Spike is excellent as the boss and excellent as a teammate going up against the boss. He can do a lot of damage if you're good at lining up your shots with him and his super is very, very useful going up against the boss. Um, I feel like he is great as being the boss, though his health kind of holds him back a little bit. He is a squishier brawler in the game right now. And like I said before, he does kind of have that individualized um, shots where he has to aim at one person at a time, um, not counting his super. His super is very good at taking out a bunch of brawlers if placed correctly. So I feel like Spike is generally a pretty good brawler to bring in, um, though I feel like there are some other brawlers that are a little bit better. So next on the list is number five, and that is Nita. So I feel like Nita fits very well as number five on our list because she is excellent as the boss and a great teammate because she has a lot of utility with her bear. So if you are the boss with Nita's bear, her bear also gets the buff. So you can use this for defense, you can use it for split pushing, you can use it for distracting. Um, I feel like Nita is just overall a great character for the boss, let alone her basic attack can also shoot through brawlers. So you can do a lot of damage to the entire team if you line it up correctly. So Nita, very good as the boss. Also as a teammate, she's also cr very, very good um, spawning her bear, distracting the boss with the bear while the other enemy team is going in. Basically, you're bringing in a second person into the game. So instead of having six people on your team, you have seven with the bear. So it can be very, very effective with Nita. So moving on to number four, and that is Jesse. So we are nearing the top of our list, and I feel like Jesse fits there very, very well. She is a monster as the boss, guys especially if you have your star power unlocked. Um, the turret can be a very annoying thing to deal with, especially on Calamity Canyon, the map that we're on right now. Um, though the things that kind of hold her back are her damage output. When you're going up against the boss, when you're not the boss, I feel like you kind of lack a lot of damage, um, which can kind of hold her back a little bit. Um, though her turret, if you place it in great spots where you know the other brawler is going to be, um, and you have access of healing it up, and you can also use it as a distraction, I feel like you can get away with um, the low damage output. So I feel like Jessie definitely fits as number four. She's crazy good, so make sure to try her out. So entering the top three of our list, number three is Daryl. So I feel like Daryl really stands apart from the other tankier brawlers in boss fight. Um, I feel like for two reasons. One, his shots are much more forgiving than Bull or Primo's because he shoots twice and he has a little bit longer range than Bull. Um, he can do a lot of damage when they get close and he can do a lot of damage to the entire team. And for the second reason, his mobility is insane. Especially on Calamity Canyon, you can use your super to go through the water even. So you can roll over the water and get away. So what I like to do with Daryl is kite the other brawlers, do as much damage as I can while they're shooting at you and charge up your super and dash away. And then wait for them to get to you and do the same exact thing. Do a bunch of damage and then kite away. Kind of like um, Mortis where you kind of uh, do a, a bunch of damage to the entire team, wait for them to group up and then get away. So I feel like Daryl really excels in that. Plus, not to mention his health, he can stay alive a little bit longer than the other brawlers. Um, so I feel like Daryl really deserves to be at number three. So jumping into number two, and that is Tara. I feel like Tara is excellent as the boss, excellent as a teammate going up against the boss. So I don't know if you guys have noticed after the last balance change, the change or the buff to her super makes it very easy to chain your super. So if you are the boss, you can chain your supers very easily doing a bunch of damage, grouping up almost the entire team in one spot and doing a bunch of damage to all of them because she does shoot through them. Now going up against the boss, I feel like she has that utility being able to drag the boss around where 
wherever she wants with her super. So if you have maybe a spike or a Shelly or a tanker unit on your team, you can use your super to drag them closer to that brawler so that they can do a bunch of damage as well. So I feel like Tara just is really, really solid in this game mode. She more than often is going to give you above the 2 minutes and 15 seconds on Calamity Canyon and is excellent as a teammate going up against the boss. So around the corner to our number one spot who I believe is the best in boss fight and I think it's kind of obvious and that is Crow. Crow has all of the qualities of being an excellent boss which he can kite brawlers very easily with his movement speed. He can charge up his super very easily. With his star power he can reduce the damage of the brawlers coming in to do damage to him and when he has his super he can get away so easily. You wait for them to group up on you and jump away. Um, Crow is just excellent as a boss. He's hands down the best boss in the game. Um, I feel like going up against the boss, he's also very good with his star power, reducing the damage, and always just getting in that poke damage, not giving up. He has very good range doing damage to the boss, so I feel like he's just really good at that chip down damage. Alright you guys, so those were my rankings of all of the brawlers in the game on the game mode boss fight. So let me know if you agreed with me. If you did disagree, let me know who you would switch and why. I'd really appreciate that. So if you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like on it. It really helped me out a lot. Also, comment below on who you are having the most luck with on this game mode. So with that being said, you guys, make sure to keep having fun with Brawl Stars, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.